So this right here is my favorite car of all time. And you're probably thinking, Jimmy, this is not some JDM rust bucket. Get super, son. And you're right. It's an American rust bucket instead. This is the original Ford GT40 Mark one. Not the Ford GT that came out in the 2000s. The car that rose to fame in the mid 60s, winning Le Mans and finally ending Ferrari's streak at the most famous race in the world. The sound of it, the look of it, everything about it is absolutely perfect. Yeah, I've not really made a video about it until now. The Mark 1 GT40 makes just a hair under 400 brake horsepower, powered by the Ford V8 just behind your head. Weighs at 905 kilograms and is capable of hitting nearly 200 miles an hour. This is a car made in the mid 60s. And luckily for us, there was originally a new mod released. World Sports Car Legends that includes an awesome version of this Mark 1 GT40. So I couldn't resist, but do what I do with all new cars in Soto Corsa. That's right, we're going to take it round the Nürburgring. No better place to test out this legend than a circuit that it raced in period, albeit it looked a little bit different back then. Yes. Well, let's go get ourselves warmed up before we get into a proper hot lap situation. So, Mark 1. GT40. It is so cool to be driving a good version of this in sim. So full manual gearbox. This one's a five speed. Just under 400 horsepower going to those rear wheels on a bias ply tyre as well, which means very little grip as we go around this circuit. But it does give a real feel of what these cars would like to drive in the period. You have to really pick your moment when you want to get on the gas and go fast. Because at any moment, you can see even third gear there, we're starting to scramble for grip as those rear tyres struggle to deal with the power from that Ford V8 just behind our head. And it's just, just cruising around like this is a pleasurable experience. It's very, very fun. Um, it's quite chilled out. Heel and toe, of course, on the way down to make sure we don't ruin that gearbox. Nice. As you would in the real GT40, I suppose, anyway, but the Mustang was having to go by. Nice long gear shifts. Give it time to go into gear. Up towards flu plats. Bit of a break. Down towards the third gear. And then feed the throttle back on closely. Now let's let her go, shall we? Let's open her up. See that speedo on the left hand side of your screen? It's 150 mile an hour, 160 mile an hour. We've come down to Schweden Kreutz just to. Off the gas, on the brake. Roll for a bit of throttle to stabilise the car and then brake as soon as we're in a straight line. We do have disc brakes in this thing, but they are from period. So it does slow down slowly. Very good idea to use the gears on the way down to slow the car down. Down the hill. Now towards the foxhole. Again, breathe off the throttle down the third gear, let it roll through on our fast lap, we're going to push a bit harder than this, but right now, this is sort of where the car likes being driven in the endurance style likes being driven at about 90%, you know, you're not really getting the most out of it, but our hot lap series isn't about that, it's about big sense, and this car for me, this is the car I had on my bedroom wall growing up and I've had the overwhelming pleasure to sit as a passenger alongside the one and only Alex Brundle, driving his GT40 replica, faithful replica, pretty much indistinguishable from the from the real thing. This car, it has good grip. Better grip than you'd expect. Keep up with a lot of modern machinery in one of these. I've still not had the chance, unfortunately, to drive one in real life yet. I'm hoping that will come up soon at some point. He says, looking to the camera longingly, please. But for me, this video is just going to be, it's just a little bit of a guilty pleasure. A bit of a Bit of a passion project, if you will. The glare there on the uh, on the windscreen, making it hard to see. But even you're driving around, and I guess not really pushing it. It just feels awesome. I love the sound of this thing. It's relentless. A bit late on the brakes down there. You can see this is where we start to feel the limitations of this car. If we drive it too hard into a corner, you will get understeer, and then power oversteer on exit. But the torque of this thing. 
<laughs> you can really throw it about when you want to. Oh, it puts a smile on my face. This is why I got into, into sim racing when I was younger. Oh, good. We're blind. <laughs> well, just to get close to what these cars are like. If, if, you're a, if you're a historic car fan and you love this sort of classic racing, I implore you to go and subscribe to my good friend GP Laps. He does much better content on this subject than I do, but whenever I dip into this sort of thing, I just have the best of time. Fourth gear now, all the torque, nearly 160 mile an hour uphill. They've got a break for the mud curve. I'm going to try third gear through here. Yep, that's about right. And then you just power out on the exit. The 4C back in this, the tyre, there's just the right amount of slip on exits to really make you feel like you're driving something old and scary. The second gear through here. Nice and easy as the uh, engine picks up. Now towards the carousel. Try second gear through here. I should probably use first gear. We're running Le Mans gearing at the moment, so the gearing is quite long. I haven't seen that fifth gear yet. We haven't needed it. In my mind, this car works better as a four speed anyway. All right, let's try and attack this section a little bit now. Let's try and warm up a bit more. Really start getting a feel for this tyre. <laughs> How it feels through here. We haven't got to deal, luckily, with all the elements that go to running this car in real life. We can just drive it hard without any consequence. You can see just how much you have to set the corner up in advance in this thing. There's no, oh, I'm going to just turn in late like in a modern car. You have to commit to your line a long, long time before the corner itself, before you get anywhere near the apex. That's one of the magic of these cars. It's like a, it's like a dance, you know, it's like a rhythm, especially for this section here at the Nürburgring, where it's all about getting the line right. Like I didn't get the line right there, sorry. <laughs> Don't blame me. But this sort of section really highlights this car character and it feels lethargic through here because you have to wait a long time. But then you look down at the speeder when you get on the gas and there you go, just wheel spinning at 110 miles an hour in second gear. Brutal. Now for my hot lap, I might have to pull over and uh, wait until tomorrow in game because I'm having a hard time seeing where I'm going at <laughs> this part of the course. It's all part of the, uh, all part of the fun though. Soft on the throttle through there, have to really wait. The car is so soft compared to modern machinery that it just wants to move around. Just wheel spinning at 140 mile an hour there, top of third gear. That last 500 RPM or so is dangerous in every gear. Oh, the torque there. It's just the perfect car. Fast enough to make you feel like you're the GOAT. Sideways enough to make you feel like you're earning the lap time. And the sound of it. The sound of it. I mean, you know what? I'm going to shut up and you can just hear it for yourself. Ignore that bit. <laughs> Finally, we hit that fifth gear. Nearly 180 mile an hour on the clock there. Can we go flat under the bridge? We have to turn in early. There's 180. Now we've got to slow it right down. Oh. Now that was a pretty good warm up. Let's wait for the sun to go down a bit, shall we? Or hit that instead. Right, we've let the sun go down a little bit. We've also changed our gear ratios to the non Le Mans ones. We've got a slightly lower top speed now. But it is time for a hot lap of my favourite track in the world in my favourite car in the world. GT40 versus the Nordschleifer. Let's go right down towards T1. Brake nice and early. Going to go down the first gear. Let's tuck her into the inside and feed the gas in slowly. Up to second quickly. And then third gear. Letting the car steal the throttle. Now brake, trying to get it into the curb. It has some back there. Nice rotation from the rear. Very nice. And you're already seeing, now that we're on it, just how much this car moves around now. It's this agility that helps us get around the corners. But you have to be careful because if you go one step over the line on this car, 
You either have a massive spin or you just oversteer into oblivion. Second gear through here, run the curve next. They're going to keep it in second gear, actually. Left foot brake, try and get the car onto the curb a little bit on the inside. Now smooth, smooth on the exit, nice. Just running a little bit of the grass there. It's fine, biased by tyres. They're pretty much rally tyres. Fourth gear up towards Flu Platz. So we're going to brake just before we take off and try and roll it through in fourth. We're going to use the torque. You see, even in fourth gear, there, the car sliding on the throttle. Those tyres behind us have pretty much made a concrete. They'll last forever. But it does mean they're very slidey. Fifth gear, 160 miles per hour. Now we're going to break to start this little crest. Go back down to fourth gear. Get onto the inside of Straight and Croix. That's where all the grip is. All the speed's right on the inside. And we're going to break just for this line. I'm a bit offline here. A bit offline. A bit of a lock of the brakes in the way. And just shows you how important it is to get that brake done early and correctly. Very nice. Just kissing the curb there on the exit. And now we go flying downhill. This is towards... This is the scariest part of a circuit in real life. Down towards the compression. We're going to brake just before it. Let the car roll back up the hill. Down the fourth. Aim for the curb on the inside. Nice. Now third. Slow it down. Nice. No, that's better. That's good. Nice and easy down there. Now try and square off the corner. Trying to avoid first gear for now because first gear is pretty much insta spin. Soft application. The front one. Nice. And now look at that V8. Roar out of the corner. Fourth gear again. We're going to break. I'm going to take third through here, actually. Try and use this camber on the inside of the corner. Let the car roll through here, just like you would do in the real-life condition. Second gear, and again, get into that camber. Slightly wide of it there. But that camber, being next to that curb and that corner, is so important. It helps rotate the car. Same down here. Get in early. Use the camber of the corner. It's so banked. A little bit of oversteer on exit there. I'm going to move my left foot over to the brake pedal to help control the rotation through here. And to miss, hit, miss. This is where you really have to be careful in this sort of car through here. This is where it's a, a lot slower than modern machinery, but you still have that agility. You still have the ability to move the car using the, the throttle pedal. The steering wheel and the throttle pedal basically work in conjunction to get this car rotating. It was very different to a modern machine. We're going to break very early, though. Down here, and now. Let the car again float out to the exit. Be really easy in the second gear. It's so easy to loop the car. Especially these sections here where half the car's unloaded. And now we're going to use that torque from the V8 behind us to drag us through here. Fourth gear, going to try it flat. <laughs> I mean, it was cool. <laughs> we don't want to do that lap after that blow. And now for the long run up the hill. Now watch that speed, though, even up the hill. We've got the torque just to drag us up. Easy on that fourth gear transition there. I didn't want to understeer. Bit of a lift on the way through to make sure we turn and back on again. You have to lift, get that weight in the right spot. We're going to hold fourth gear, 7,000 RPM. Engine second away behind us, and we're going to go down a third for the mud curver. On the front, nice and early. Let the car just flow out to the exit of the corner. Oh my god, this is where this car is. It's most challenging at speed through fast corners because it just wants to slide all over the place. Set up so soft this thing, it's set up to slide nicely and be recoverable, which is good. But in the high speed stuff, not so good. A bit scary. Now the carousel. Breaking early, trying not to lock a brake on the way in. Rolled it through. This is where you feel how, just how low this car is. Time's not so bad so far. Now we get into the best section of racetrack in the world. I say it every time we go through here, but I'm not wrong. I'm going to hold third through this section here. Let it roll through. Try and get a nice dip into the camber there. Nice. Avoid that curb on the left. Second gear turning early. Look in. A little bit too hesitant on the throttle there, but it's okay. Ooh. Just as a reminder, we have nearly 400 horsepower in a car that weighs under a thousand kilos. What a rocket. Bear in mind, put yourself back into the shoes of these guys who drove this thing in period. No safety, no barriers, just trees, fires, and unfortunately a lot of death. Sometimes I'm glad to be doing this in a sim. 
Right, okay, come on. The car almost feels frustrated in this section. You can feel it, it wants to just... Just get up and get up to speed, but you can't. A lot of second gear, a lot of left foot braking through here. Try and make the most of the fact that we're staying in one gear. Exit of ice curve there, and now we go down towards Flansgarten. This is where you get a little bit of air. We're going to try and not get air in this car, because if we do, we're going to have a... Oh, we had a little hop. Going to hold it in third through here. We've got the torque, doesn't matter. Do need to go down the gear, then just... There you go, slide the car through, anticipate the corner. Fourth gear, let the car get over, and now full gas. It's important to be in that camber there, we get spat out. Car sliding through there at 140 miles an hour. And then back down to third gear. It was almost lazy the way you drive this car, but it's so involved. Very nice. Now, tying the carousel. Worst corner on the circuit, as everyone knows. Your second gear. Come on, V8. You and me, baby. Now, a very, very important corner here. you got to get this right. Getting this wrong means a slow run down the straight, to be honest. This engine's so good, they wouldn't matter. Blinded by the sun. Now we get to let us sing. Let's go. Seven minutes on the board. That's fifth gear. 6,000 RPM in fifth gear. 170 miles an hour. 175 miles an hour. Come on, GT40. Give me that 180. 180 just before the Bilstein Bridge. Turn in full commitment. Keep it flat. Yeah, 185 mile an hour. And we're going to have to brake. We're going to have to brake. Softly on the brake pedal. We don't want to lock. If we lock here, we're dead. Oh, just about making the thing stop in time. Should be a sub eight minute. Fairly comfortably. Cross the line. It's a 7.42. For the Mark 1 GE40 here at the Nürburgring. Oh, that's so good. I love this car, man. I'm so glad I finally did this. I feel like this is one of those things that I don't do. I feel like I've overdone the Nürburgring in my time as a YouTuber, but I don't care. This is... I love getting excited for sim racing and stuff like this makes me excited. It was so involved driving it. It's so leery everywhere. It's trying to get sideways. You don't quite have the brakes of a modern car. It just feels like a proper manual experience. And for a car from 1965, this version here, to do a lap of the Nürburgring in less than eight minutes is pretty amazing. So. A massive shout out to the guys at WSC for an awesome addition to uh, to Seto Corsa. I'll put a link down to the full mod down below. And also I'll link GP Lapsy's video on the mod because it's much better than this is. I had a great time. I loved it. But if you did, of course, do all the good things. Hit the like button, subscribe, uh, all, all that stuff. And a massive thank you to the channel members and patrons for uh, sticking by me and also being so supportive during our recent charity race. We raised over £54,000 for the Mind Charity. Well done, guys. You guys are heroes. Anyway, I'm going to probably do some more laps. So take care. Have an awesome day. See you next time.